There is little doubt that the weather can dramatically affect our mood. Many of us will have happy memories of time spent relaxing in a park on a bright and sunny day with the smell of freshly cut grass and the reassuring warmth of the sun on our skin. We can all remember a time we've ended up miserable and annoyed after getting soaked to the skin just trying to get to work on a grey and rainy day when we would much rather be dry and cosy on the sofa at home. But some extremes of climate and geography can have a far more dramatic impact on our physical and mental well-being than the occasional day of bad weather. Few of us can even imagine what it is like to live in shadow, not seeing the sun outside our window for nearly six months every year. But this is the reality of living in the small town of Rukan in the Telemark district of Norway. For Rukan, the problem is not simply its climate, although the average temperature in the winter rarely exceeds minus 5 degrees Celsius, with fewer than six hours of sunlight a day in mid-December. It is the result of the town's geography. The town lies at the foot of one of the tallest mountains in southern Norway, the magnificent Gaustatoppen. On the high plateau above it, the tracks of a popular ski resort crisscross the brightly lit snow. While hidden deep down in the Vestfjord Valley, Rukan's residents get used to being denied any more than a distant glimpse of the low winter sun for the long months between October and March. But ironically, the town owes its very existence to this seemingly uninviting location. It was founded in 1908 by the industrialist Sam Eid, when his company, Norsk Hydro, built the world's largest hydroelectric power plant at the site of the 104-metre Rukan waterfall. Today, while the original Vormok power plant is now a museum and tourist attraction, the legacy of Sam Eid lives on in Rukon. And curiously, it's not just for his industrial achievements that he's remembered. Eid understood the toll that living in the shadows for six months of the year had on the people of Rukon. As early as 1913, he came up with the idea of using mirrors on the mountaintops to reflect sun down into the town. But he had neither the resources nor the technology to put this plan into action. Instead, in 1928, Norsk Hydro paid for the construction of a cable car that could take the town's residents up out of the shadows to enjoy some much needed sunlight. And that's how it used to be for the people of Rukan. If you wanted to feel the warmth of the winter sun on your face, you had to leave the town. That was until 2001, when the artist Martin Anderson decided to revisit Eid's original sun mirrors idea with cutting-edge technology. Twelve years later, Three 17-square-metre glass mirrors finally sat on the mountainside, high above the town. Today, controlled by a computer in Germany, they follow the path of the sun and reflect its rays into Rukan's town square. The artificial sunlight that illuminates the benches far down in the valley is only 20% less intense than the actual sun. Bringing the light back to the town was a costly and slow process. Not everyone thought that a small patch of sun was worth the half a million dollars it took to build the mirrors. But seeing faces brighten as they step into the sunlight makes it seem like a small price to pay. Teachers bring their students to eat their lunch in the sun and older people come to relax and chat with friends. The difference the sunshine makes is magical. It brings people together and it makes them smile. 
The residents of Rukan no longer have to spend the winter in shadows, waiting impatiently for the sun to return. And it's clear that they're all enjoying getting used to their new place in the sun.